So, um, so one of the goals of the project was to, to build tools, software tools, to allow students to do preliminary design of satellites. So, uh, preliminary design, uh, it's uh, phase zero, phase A, A, sorry, in the ESA definitions. It's uh, globally, it's how you, how you do the, the precising of your satellite. I guess you all know that. Uh, your, you are giving, uh, more or less is giving the subsistence budget, like uh, what's the final mass, final cost and so on you are expecting for your satellite. And you need a lot of communication. And I'm glad that uh, you insist on it uh, in the Metasat presentation, actually. Uh, so, oh, sorry, I have to find the way to do that. So when I was talking first about, uh, like when I thought about um, um, preliminary design, I was more thinking on like you have a nice interface with a, a nice ergonomic interface. You can build your little piece of uh, the nano satellite, putting them together and do some simulation for it. And when I discovered reality, it was more like you have a big spreadsheet everywhere. And uh, even if you put uh, colors on these spreadsheets, and a little picture somewhere, someone, it's still a spreadsheet. But OK, at least with to do preliminary design, we have a lot of uh, tools, like a lot of software tools that are uh, part of them are open source, but not all. And that's a big issue in our case, because we wanted to in Nanostar, we explicitly wanted to do all the thing open source. It's uh, for education, it's for students and for uh, human knowledge. So it's very logical to have something open source, fully open source. And we have many things there. We have different, uh, we have libraries, we have uh, like uh, independent tools, and we have also methodology. I will not go very deep in that. I prefer to, to speak about methodology. So the new trendy way to do preliminary design is concurrent design engineering. Uh, so like, I'm sure also you are all familiar with that. Uh, the concept is more like uh, is how to, to make experts talk together and be very efficient in the preliminary design process. So with some interaction, but together in the same room. For, for Nanostar, uh, we want to we wanted to make uh, concurrent design engineering, but in separate uh, places. Like uh, the the pandemia, the COVID pandemia was a very good <laughs> uh, example. Actually, it it was totally unexpected, but it we we built tools for that. So we have students in teams to do preliminary design in different institutions. They are uh, forming. They are in the same. They are in the same team, but in different institutions. We are five institutions working on that. And we we have chosen some uh, like we want to make something open source, and we have chosen to to uh, to rely on databases better than spreadsheets. I will not extend on that, but that was for us it was a key point for uh, for doing uh, like efficient uh, efficient work on that. Um, so to we propose a f the first year we propose a full suite of different software to do all the subsystems uh, descriptions and uh, we were with IST with the uh, Technico de Lisboa is we were um, we were we are still responsible of the consistency of all of that but as you can see it's a big mess and i'm going just to focus on the the backbone of um, of this uh, of this suite is what we call nanospace all of that to introduce nanospace well so nanospace just a little uh, a little demo style thing you can access it actually there is a test server running uh, you can access it uh, directly with this link it's um, you have some documentation associated you have a gitlab uh, we as i entered the 21st century so now we have a gitlab and uh, we we can um, we can uh, publicly like it's easier for us to publish our code actually it's all of open source of course um, so the interface what is what is the thing of the this uh, nanospace interface we want it to have it's to have like a, a spreadsheet like model but with the databases behind um, for many reasons I, I will go further on that. So what's basically what we have when we go in this interface, we have a project tree uh, with the different subsystems. We can put like it's totally, uh, you can manage it uh, the way you want. You have a project tree, you have 
some uh, some mods for your satellite. For example, when you are in a survival mod, you are you have not the same consumption as in the nominal uh, mod. For example, you can visualize the data and add data in your database through this interface. It's very very simple, no no issue. But what's interesting, most interesting, the data we are using, we we wanted to to keep close to a spreadsheet style edition, so you can you can for example you can do some little calculus in the cells. You can uh, you can have dependency between cells of uh, of this uh, this interface. But you can also, like for example, change units, uh, do li little math. We are using uh, MX uh, parser behind, and it's uh, very, very simple and very like efficient for our needs. Um, and also, you can share the project with other users. That's the goal, the final goal of the thing. We, you can share it, so you can you can have many users editing it. But that's not the, the most interesting, like that's uh, just what you can see here. What's interesting is what's behind. So behind the, the, the technical choice and why we have done that. Uh, so we wanted for our students to have something that was platform independent. So they can just connect with the browser to something that allows them to, to share the data. Why not using, for example, uh, like a Google Drive thing, thing like that? For many different reasons, we didn't want to use that. I guess you you would know. Uh, we want to use the REST API to ease a third-party uh, connection for when you are, for example, if I'm if I'm dealing with a polyastro script, I want to keep my script and easily uh, upload them, like uh, upload the result in the databases, like automatically. It was one of our requirements for that. And at the end, we, want, we wanted ACID property for the, um, for the database uh, because we have concurrent access on it and we, we need something robust about that. So if we choose, maybe it's not the best choice. I, I agree, uh, we are not expert on that. So we choose the Neo4j uh, graph uh, database for doing that. Uh, um, Neo4j has uh, ACID properties. And, uh, and for the front end and back end, we use uh, Angular and uh, Spring Boot more for practical reasons than uh, real, real uh, uh, deep re technical reasons. It was more we were comfortable with that. Uh, so, um, so we we have a front end, we have a back end with uh, with the databases on the architecture. But more interesting, what's the link? Uh, the link with third party application. For example, you are using. Uh, you are using um, uh, some scripts in Python, how you are going to connect. So we are providing a REST interface. You can directly connect to the REST interface with your application, but sometimes users don't like it. They, yes. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, you, you want to use, for example, directly your Python script to, to, to do that. So. Uh, in Python, we, we have written a little interface, uh, a little API actually, uh, to, to do the connection with the REST interface. If you don't like to work with REST interface, uh, it's your it's your right. And you have like uh, three lines of uh, Python code to connect to that, like uh, connecting to the database uh, and after like uploading data from there or downloading data from there. The same thing we have done with uh, Angular, with uh, Node.js. Uh, we have written a little component. It's public. It's on uh, the, the NPM uh, repository. Uh, it's literally three lines of code to add some elements in your uh, in your uh, web uh, web application. For example, I have done that for my students. Uh, which, uh, it's just a, it's a link budget calculation. Very very easy uh, thing. Uh, you put the altitude and uh, according to the to the to our uh, def like some default parameters, you click on the button and you get like you get some the synthesis of the your link budget you want. And what we do with Nanospace, we add two little things, two little components, like to ease the upload and download, uh, like uh, to to update the databases and retrieve the elements. You will you will see here it's not aut fully automatic. It's uh, like uh, half. Uh, it's a uh, manual. In uh, you are doing that in a manual way. But the idea behind is, of course, you can use um, use the access uh, automatically in your scripts in if you need to. 
for that, we are working also, it's not done yet, on the, the final architecture we are targeting is to implement a message broker that allow uh, to like to send an event on an event bus to warn the applications that are updating the, and the, when the database is, is updated. For example, if the altitude change, you want to change everything. So what I want you to take home <laughs> with this presentation is we, we were looking for a way to integrate very easily third party applications to some data centralized databases for our preliminary design. Uh, we want to deal with concurrent access, remote located team context. So in the pandemic uh, era, it's uh, like it's uh, quite trendy actually. Uh, so Coda is available, uh, open source. Uh, you have the, I put the two address. It's, I, I apologize, it's not totally stable and we are like, we are still in the debugging process, but it's, uh, you can try it. We have a dockerized version. If you want to install it on your own server, it's possible. You, it's a web service, so it's not that easy to, to go through the process of installing like uh, all the Angular dependency and all of that. But you have the dockerized version if you want to try and it's uh, working uh, to my, like it's working. Uh, so what we want to do in the future, it's more like um, uh, to deal with the event management. We we have a very, like after your talks, that's comfort me in what you were thinking on the formal pip pipeline management for the, for the different, if some, like you want some data are impacting some result in your uh, preliminary design, we don't have a, something very formal to describe that. And we are thinking of, on the model-based engineering uh, system designing for, for doing that. And so what, what you have said in the doc presentation, the, the doc uh, presentation, uh, Boris, for example, it's very, very meaning, uh, meaningful for us. Uh, and we want also to check the resilience of our like uh, method to work for preliminary design using existing uh, stuff like uh, docs or GMAT, uh, for example. That's also, if you have a question, I would be glad to, to answer it. Thanks for your attention. So people, uh, oh, uh, there is a question from Boris. Uh, thanks, Thibaut. Uh, you can count, ah, he says uh, that you can count on uh, Boris Agre's support. Uh, <laughs> Boris Agre from the uh, Observatoire de Paris. Uh, and you'll be given a nice docs laboratory. Um, so, yeah, uh, the other questions, I would be more than happy to facilitate them and uh, also ask one of my own. Uh, so, uh, first of all, kudos for uh, using uh, AGPL licensing, <laughs> uh, that's really cool. Le uh, the way it should be. Uh, and uh, furthermore, um, are there other uh, concurrent design engineering solutions that are web-based and could uh, facilitate your uh, needs? Or uh, if there are, uh, how come you didn't choose them? Yes, good, uh, good questions actually. <laughs> um, for the um, like for the AGPL, it's just we wanted to to have a contaminated uh, license uh, such as the GPL, and uh, the only one we found that uh, the industry cannot just uh, take us back uh, and use to de to deploy their own server on the for web application was uh, Afero GPL. Uh, it's more like we we don't like actually we don't want people to 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 deploy our solution and make pay for that. It's, uh, we want to keep it for education. Uh, it's important for us and I guess your co like the OSCW community will agree on that. Yeah, I'm, it's also uh, useful uh, for uh, the whole community. And uh, I think that uh, choosing a uh, very viral license like uh, ATPL uh, can be effective on that. Uh, also, kudos from uh, Konstantinos Kanaburas. Uh, he likes the tool and would love to try it. Uh, he's from the ASA team. Uh, Boris? Yes, can I ask a question? Uh, Thibault, uh, um, 
uh, what's your plan to make that uh, testable and available? Because I, I went to your to the website you, you indicated at the moment. It's uh, it's, it's yes. private and uh, it's completely oh. understandable. But uh, what's your plan? Maybe like uh, well, I, I try like <laughs> so, uh, sorry for that. <laughs> I try my no. best. <laughs> it's uh, pretty like we. It's not very common at ISA to to release some open source and thing like that. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, still on so. the process. Uh, normally, like. Uh, normally, you should have an access. The GitLab, the, the GitLab we are emerging, we have uh, serving, should be public. If it's not the case, let me know. Uh, so you should have a full access on the of the code of all the code uh, basically. If it's really uh, problematic to access the code through the Isaiah server, I will put it on GitLab and uh, uh, mm -hmm. like or somebody will put it on GitLab uh, to avoid any legal issues <laughs> um, uh, for uh, for the community. It, normally, like now when I'm testing it, it's public. So if you have if you have troubles to access it, just let me know. <laughs> there, there was another website you indicated uh, something like. Uh, DCA dash uh, nano space yes. and, and that's also closed. No, no. Uh, well, another one, another another okay. link in your slide. Yeah, uh, talking yeah. about the front end. Yes, this one. I guess this one should be public. It's on our test server. The second one I well, put in the chat. That that's the one I tested, and uh, I don't know what you expect. Uh, if you expect us to. To see something there, uh, not, uh, like not. it's not like it's not. Um, you have to to go through a little. Uh, I, I hesitate honestly for this presentation. I hesitate to do a tutorial better, but you have. Uh, I can provide you the like the three line of uh, the three elements to. You have to register to put a name. It's uh, very very like it's very simple on the top uh, right of the website. I cannot. Uh, Share my screen, but it's <laughs> it's the idea. You you go, you register, and from there you can create your own project or import already existing project. We have some skeleton example in the in the GitLab. I put uh, in the chat, and you can you you have a little documentation in the in the GitLab page. So I hope it's uh, it's enough. If it's not the case, just mail me or say okay. say that to me. I will uh, I will arrange it. I promise. So, uh, everybody can start creating a project with this link. Yes. Should be. Okay. Great. Yes. Congratulations. With the test, uh, well, it's a test server, so we, we um, like, uh, uh, regularly we update it and we just uh, crash all the, all the database. Okay. So you have to, like, you have, you can make your own save of your own uh, project. So yeah. it's, uh, it's the a great launch. Uh, website. We don't give a guarantee for your work. If you work on it, for the moment we are uh, trying and failing a lot, so it's uh, it's on ongoing work. But I, I will be glad to to talk later with you about Docs uh, on the, how how we can uh, make the things together uh, like for real. <laughs> awesome. uh, 